kababayan, if you're just joining us on our program, marami po tayong uh, resources out there. If you know of anyone or if you yourself have been a victim of sexual assault, you can report this. There are a lot of avenues. We will give you that information. But uh, let's go back to the topic. Before you report something or someone, what are the things that you need to consider, Anna? Well, I think you you have to make sure that whoever maybe is the, the victim or survivor is safe, right? Yeah. So you don't want to put that person more in danger. So if it's a child and it's the parent that's the perpetrator or the one who's doing the bad things, then you... Need to take them out of that environment, Well, right? <laughs> Well, there's, that's a yes and no. You know, part of it is that there is a procedure where it happens. You should really call the authorities mm -hmm. and let them deal with it. There's also a legal matter here because it, technically it's still their children. Okay. You know, but still, of course, number one is safety of that child. Okay. So you, there is a hotline that you can call for child abuse. And, you know, if you're the one, if you're there and you're like, okay, I, I know something's going on and I just want to help, you should also know that don't feel like, oh no, I'm reporting this family and then they're gonna, you know, there are gonna be bad things that will happen to them. Really, when, when the Department of Child and Family Services comes in, and Pauline probably can share a little bit more about this, is they're really just there to help. One, they're supposed to protect the children, right? That's our job, all of our jobs, right. is to make sure that children are safe. And then after that, um, to make sure that the family can also help protect this child. So what are the ways that we can help you so that the safety of the child, or or the uh, particularly the child, can continue from this point forward. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. We're forgetting the the biggest cloud over this topic is the fact that we are mostly all Filipinos are Catholic, mm -hmm. right? So because we are Catholic, we don't talk about these uncomfortable situations, di ba? Nakakahiya. Ano na lang sasabihin ng mga kapatid, kamag-anak, mga kaibigan. There is a stigma in the Filipino community. We need to address that. Uh, how do you feel about that, Pauline? I think that is very true. Kasi nga, usually yung perpetrator is a part of the family. So that adds shame to it. But we really need to shine a light on this. Because especially with the department, our main goal is to keep children safe. Mm. and to promote their well-being, to make sure that they achieve their fullest potential. But if you're in a family or you're in a community where that's not even, you know, sex or sexual assault is not even being talked about, then you as a child, you're not gonna, you don't have anyone to go to. So you're gonna seek that elsewhere and who knows where that elsewhere, el elsewhere will be. Right. If that's even a safer environment from your already kind of Oh, oh, alanganin, di ba? Yeah. Um, Nastasha, let's talk about CPAF's involvement yes. because I know that you are always there supporting mm -hmm. people that go through this. Let's talk about um, the uh, yes, the services at um, Center for Pacific Asian Families. So when it comes to like survivors, we encourage them to like whenever they're ready, you know, that's when they sh when they should seek help. You know, they're not forced to get help like right away. Mm -hmm. It's it's a process, you know. And then whenever they're ready, we have um, our hotline, which is they could call. We have um, professional counselors there where they could provide support. And then we have the sexual assault response team. It's a forensic exam when you've been raped. Mm -hmm. And then you call the police, and then you could get a test at a hospital and get an exam and how it goes. And okay, then pero paano yun, Nastasha? Sabihin natin, wala silang funds to take care of this. <laughs> These services are free. Wait, C say that again? CPAP services are free. So any like STAR exam, counseling, anything, these services are free. So um, when you get a STAR exam, you're not alone. Some One of uh, one of our advocates are going to be there to like guide you in the process. And, eh, like, paano kung hin gust gusto nilang may kausap na nagtatagalog? Yes, we have advocates who speak like Tagalog and different kinds of Asian languages. So let us know that if whether you're comfortable with speaking in Tagalog or like, you know, like um, any Asian languages. Oh, oh kasi okay. im importante yun yung kausap mo, yes. nakakaintindi mm -hmm. ng lingwahe mo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the case, Anna? Uh, yeah. I would imagine as a Filipino who has been a victim of sexual assault, gusto kong kausapin yung taong makakaintindi. Mm -hmm. uh, 
na nangy nangyayari to sa pamilya kasi sometimes our culture you need to talk to someone who understands it absolutely you know i think what people don't realize about filipinos in the us is that even if they can speak english they don't necessarily think english they still you know think in a filipino culture mm. so there has to be that like cult being like a cultural broker and under like i really understand because that's my culture too uh -oh. you know so uh -oh. yes absolutely iba talaga pag pinag-uusapan niyo sa, sa lenguwahe ng pinaglakihan ninyo i think, uh -oh. I think yeah. also because minsan there's such a push for to prosecute the the, the perpetrator and with us Filipinos, that's really hard. So when you have a counselor or you have a therapist who can understand that, then for you as a victim, it's easier for you to relate, it's easier for you to open up, it's just easier for you to process that trauma. Okay, um, here on our show, we will wrap up um, what we're talking about uh, when we return. Don't go away, we'll be right back. <laughs>